Now, identity theft is very scary. Um, there's, there's five different kinds of identity theft right now, and unfortunately our children are a bit at the largest risk. What really scares me about that Anthem hack was there was 80 million people affected, and those were only the primary users on that account. So what I, looking at the pattern, because I talk about this across the nation, is most people don't know they've been a victim of identity theft until they pull their credit report or they start getting collection calls. We had a client that had been married for 30 years. The last five years she kept getting collection calls for someone with a similar name and kept saying there's no such person here. Well, she and her husband went to refi their mortgage and she found she had a 580. She had all these open accounts and charged off accounts. The person living under her identity in Florida had actually purchased a house and not paid payments for two years on it. They'd also pur purchased a truck from Ford Motor Company and just been living the high life. So it took us a while. Um, I just wrote another book on identity theft removal in 10 days. Typically it can be removed if you have a police report. But in order to get the police report, you should take it in case it, this ever happens to anybody. I hope it doesn't, but, the, but it shows right now everybody is at higher risk with the identity thieves. Identity theft is a higher criminal activity right now than anything else because a lot of them are doing it they can hack into or purchase these names and socials on websites. So you can remove it in 10 days if you take a copy of your credit report to the police department, make a police report, download the FTC website, the identity theft, I mean Federal Trade Commission, yeah FTC.com Pull down the identity theft report form, fill that in. I recommend it be notarized. They don't really tell you this, but I recommend it be notarized. It just puts more teeth in it. Then send it to the bureaus. Technically, you're only supposed to tell one bureau, and then the other bureau tells the other two. But, you know, I kind of have my issues with the bureaus here. Sorry not to be jaded, but I would want to make sure that it's taken care of. Yes? Many of the uh, uh, employers, or prospective employers, are asking for your social security information at the point that you're just submitting your initial application. So what is your view on that? How do you suggest that we respond when that is a request that comes in? Unless it's part of the job requirement for being hired, I would tell them that you would give it to them upon hire. Um, who in here knows the legal remedies of, or rules of that for employment? You know the. They are not allowed to run your credit until they make. So employers are not allowed to run your credit until they make a decision on whether or not they're going to hire you. Uh huh. 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 U
understand that's a problem. And she actually suggested bringing that to the attention of her office. Perfect. Government is exempt from a lot of laws. Okay, <laughs> Congress passes laws all the time, but they don't apply to Congress. The same thing happens with the state, same thing with the county, same thing with the city. And a lot of them, unfortunately, are what we call midnight laws. You don't even know they've been in effect until you come up against them, and it's like, oh, we passed that. Well, no one knew about it. In which way? Well, if you do self-e-verify, mm -hmm. you can put in certain information and it will pull up, you know, are you the person that you say you are? That's helpful. Um, but then that gets me back to social media. And I know I have a lot of friends and family like to share on Facebook and, you know, different websites. Sometimes we're sharing too much information. And identity things are really getting good at building these algorithms. Like if you have your pets on there a lot, a lot of people unfortunately use that as a password. I strongly suggest that you use quite a few, at least four digits in your password. So it could be Fluffy1649, something that doesn't have to do with your birth date or any family member. Some uh, say that putting a freeze on your credit so that nobody can access it without your written permission or verbal permission, I'm not sure how, which one it is, but is that that will help. Yeah, freezes, especially if you suspect you've been a victim of identity theft or a potential. If you pull your credit report and you notice like addresses you've never lived, that's usually not a good sign. Or maybe a, a slight altercation of your spelling of your name, that's not a good sign either. Putting a freeze on is actually pretty simple. What you do is just write to the bureau and think, you know, tell them that you highlight a copy of your credit report with maybe the suspicious addresses. State to them that you'd like to put a freeze on your identity. Typically, it lasts for six to nine months, um, and you can check it from there. But what the freeze is going to, going to do, you're going to designate a phone number. So anytime you apply for credit, they're going to call your designated phone number to verify that that's actually you applying for credit. And I suggest that on our children as well. One aspect that people uh -huh. put way too much information about online in their uh, profiles and whatnot birthday information. Exactly. I, I had a phone call from Citibank several years ago uh, asking to verify them opening a new account for me. Mm -hmm. The reason they called me is that the person had the wrong birth date by one day. Wow. And uh, they had the wrong birth date by one day mm -hmm. because that was what was in my profile on purpose. Smart. Really smart. And another thing you can do too is um, yeah, change the, change the birth date or don't give them the birth date at all. But that, that was really, really smart. Um, you mentioned Anthem, and uh, mm -hmm. I, I mentioned a lot of people in your Anthem subscribers, and I called them a couple weeks ago or last week, and they said I wasn't hacked. I, I, I truly really? For sure. And how do they know? <laughs> <laughs> but um, is it worthwhile doing what they're offering in terms of that? Program. If it's free, I would definitely take okay. them up on it and just monitor your credit report. Right. So um, it, that, those are like one year, two year trials, and then I mentioned loss of five thousand dollars to continue. But you think it's worth doing even if you're not hacked, even if you haven't been affected. Well, take advantage of that. My my point is, and I'm going to play the devil's advocate here. Can they prove that you weren't hacked? Can they prove you weren't compromised? Yeah. I mean, how do they prove it? It's just like. Experian was selling information, they got caught, and you haven't really heard about it because they kind of swept it under the rug. They uh, were selling identity thieves information direct from their bureaus. They downloaded it and sold it out there. And then they say no one was harmed. Really? So, you know? so when, they, when they tell me that I wasn't hacked, they really don't They have no idea. They, really don't know. Okay. they can't verify that. And what makes me nervous about that is child identity theft is our fastest growing crime here. People use it for tax reasons, they use it for employment, they use it for medical. Um, and the children are at highest risk because they don't even know they've been a victim until they turn 18. We had two paralegals, two of them out of six in the law office, went to open accounts for their kids that were going off to college, 
they already had open accounts and charge offs. They couldn't even get a bank account. You know what I mean? That's a pretty low ratio right there if you look at two out of six of the paralegals in the office. So we were able to get it straightened out. But, you know, it's for people that don't know how to get it straightened out, it really concerns me. Because the FTC shows, Federal Trade Commission, that it takes the average consumer 200 hours and thousands of dollars to clear up their name from identity theft. I have a personal friend here in town who was once married to a man. Uh, they were in Las Vegas with the kids. They had a broken taillight or something out. The next thing they know, they had sher seven sheriff's deputies swarming them with guns, arrested her husband. His brother, who was a career criminal, had used his name. They locked him up in jail. It took him a week to clear his identity. Now, can you imagine her kids? They were between three and eight seeing that. I mean, it's just it's traumatizing. So it's just, you never know what's going to happen. So if we put a credit freeze on mm -hmm. and it's good for nine months, you can renew it again for another nine months? You can renew it. So They may charge you the second time around. Oh, they may charge you. Mm -hmm. Okay. okay. They're I was going to say, why not just keep a freeze on it all the time? Yeah, they only do it for so, so long and then they'll take it off. But we're, we're trying to get some legislation changed so that they'll put it on longer. Okay. Thank Especially you. for children. Yes. So along those lines, for children, is it possible to put a, or get legislation changed, hopefully, so that children cannot have somebody apply for credit on to their name until they hit 18? They know there's a, a freeze until they hit 18. You can't, yeah, you can't get a freeze on it. Um, there's no legislation that says every child, but if the parents are proactive, what you need to do to write into the bureaus is you have to provide the child's birth certificate, social security, your proof, photo proof, and proof of address to show that you're the legal guardian who has the right to do that. But yes, they will put a freeze on your child's identity. And I strongly suggest to anyone in here that was Anthem, grandkids, niece, nephews, children, anybody, please protect our children. I happen to know an ex-wife, I won't say who, mm -hmm. but two children that uh, when they turned 18 and started to get interested in cars and loans mm -hmm. and credit scores, uh, it, they found out that their mother had used both of their names and had taken up all types of loans and you know their scores were negative almost. Uh, so I'm sure, and unfortunately, it gets really tricky because if they turn it in for identity theft, she's going to get arrested. Because part of it says, do you swear under penalty of perjury that you will help prosecute the person if the person is found? So it's a really sticky situation between a rock and a hard spot. I have two questions here. Okay. Yes. Jacques, I was there. just going to give some tips that I used to give folks because I uh -huh. work for identity theft. Okay. And a couple of places to check for is your driver's license record. Uh -huh. It's a small fee. And a lot of times they will buy, they buy social security numbers buy the car loan for like a hundred bucks a shot. Absolutely. So you're thinking credit, but there's many other places so they get illegal driver's license mm -hmm. and things. So check your driver's license record. Check your social security records. Run explained uh, uh, monies on your account that you don't know. Another thing to watch for, which is really sad, is obituaries. Every time I read obituaries, I cringe. They put their date of birth. They put the, where they were born. They put their parents' name. They put where they work. They put it takes a while for all that depth to, to trickle through the system. So you're just putting your identity or that person's identity out there. After my husband died, I got a thing two month, two years later. So, and I didn't put that all in the paper, but if most people do. Read the obituaries. It's got all that information. You don't need to put all of that in there because you're just giving that person's identity. Now you the are. place to look for is your tax records. Because mm -hmm. like you're talking about buying a home, we had cases repeatedly where people would oh, buy homes and cars and accounts. So those are good places to look. It doesn't hurt your credit record. You can do it quietly with little or no expense. And it really gives you a pro, you know, you're proactive rather than reactive. Exactly. And it's all about educating, learning what you can do to protect yourself. Where did you work if you don't mind? Uh, I worked for the regional. I was responsible for J.C. Penney Corporation for the 26 Western states. Okay. So you so saw quite a bit of oh, that yeah. identity theft. 
there's a system, of course it's illegal, but they take every credit card and debit card number, has the bin number for the bank, it's all, now it's a formula. So mm -hmm. they punch in a correct card, and it'll give them the next 500 or 1,000 cards that that bank has issued, and the card number doesn't give them your name, doesn't give them whether the account's open, so a lot of times they'll hit you for a dollar charge or a pizza. Right. You can ask the victims all the time, have you ordered pizza recently? And they say no, but that would be on their card. They love, the thieves love to do stuff like that. Yeah. But those are great places and, and good things to do. And like I say, you know, and then we would have people just, you wouldn't believe the excuses they give you for things they did. But yeah, these are little tips that you can do. Another thing is, like you talk about freezing your record, there is, mm -hmm. like I said, there can be a small fee for that. But if you, people say, well, I put a flag on, well, flag is very temporary. Another thing is, nothing, it's like a red light on a street. It's not going to stop a car. It will slow it down. Right. But a vendor, a vendor or we call them vendors, but banks or stores or whatever, can still issue credit. Doesn't stop them if they want to take, and like you used to deal with the banks, and they would open accounts for the folks, and then they would use them with our company, and we would get nailed, because that's the agreement we had, because we had lower fees. But they would say, well, if we get six out of 10 that are good, we're ahead of the game. Seriously, it costs money to, to deal with these issues. But they would tell us that, you know, we're still ahead of the game by not checking, and they don't check everything. Don't kid yourself, it's a system. Oh, I know, I and know. They don't check a great deal of it. And another thing, too, that our Yenny Thieves do is they'll open a card in your name, but they'll change the address. Immediately. And that's very, very familiar. Oh, I'm, you know, I'm going to be saying to my sisters, would you please send it there? And then you don't even know until you get the collection calls. And they're adding themselves as authorized users. Oh, we went through right. that battle daily because folks that know you are ex-wives and husbands. Oh, that's a joy. Because <laughs> they know everything about you. You know, there's just, it's just... And, it's, and it costs money. So when these companies tell you they can't fix it, it's not so much they can't fix it, it's cheaper not to fix it. I agree. I agree. 100%. This gentleman's head is... I was part of the Anthem Act, and okay. uh, I signed up for the free protection. Would you repeat what you said about it potentially affecting my relatives? Well, if you have children in the home, and you're the primary on the card, it could affect them because now they have your information, your wife's information, including maiden name, social security, and any children you know that you may have that are under the age of 18 on there. They're going to be dependents. I can guarantee you with those identity thieves that stole all that information, they're going to filter the system looking for people specifically that have dependents. They're going to take those dependents and put them at the highest risk because they're going to start opening accounts in their names and using their identities on the black market to open, you know, get driver's licenses. Medical identity theft is huge as well. And I don't know about you, but I don't want to be treated for someone else's medical record if they've stolen mine. And then I'm in an emergency situation and can't speak for myself. So it's more connected to the immediate family then? For Anthem, I would think so. I mean, you're still at risk because they have all of your information and medical history. They know where you've lived, the doctors that you've seen, things like that, but you're still at risk as well. So I would really advise that you guys take those free services. Thank you. I use primarily a debit card. Uh-huh. Is, how does this relate to all the things? Just, what's the difference in using a debit card versus a credit card as far as all this? It depends on the bank and their protection. You'll have to read the fine print really carefully to see what the reimbursement, if you've been a victim of it and how they'll reimburse you. So some of the banks have a, an out clause where they don't have to reimburse you immediately. You can do like a waiting period. A lot of your credit cards, they'll reimburse you right away and they'll do the investigation. Well, I'm also interested in how it affects your credit using a debit card versus a credit card. Debit cards don't get reported on the credit report, so that shouldn't affect your credit at all. Uh, I just had a quick question. Uh -huh. What is your feeling on LifeLock? LifeLock, I don't know, there's so many of them out there. The part that kind of cracked me up, and LifeLock, one of the founders, actually used his dad. <laughs> was, he created identity theft on his own dad. 
He was a dentist. So if it kind of takes a crook to catch a crook, maybe they've got the better program. I don't know. I, I always just thought that was really ironic. So, but there's so many of them out there right now. You just kind of need to shop around and see. I think it's kind of apples and oranges. It's what are the fees? What are they going to protect you for? And a lot of them, um, they'll help you by notifying the bureau you've been a victim, but they don't help you fill out any of the forms. And just like the FTC, it's not. They're not going to help you. They want the statistics and they'll give you the forms, but they don't help you like the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau if someone refuses to delete it. So you don't have quite as much rights and coverage there. So you just really have to be your own advocate and keep on top of it. I really just want to sing a new song that I've been practicing in the shower. Okay. okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, if you have a, a credit card and you've never really paid an annual percentage rate, I guess, is that a good thing or is that a bad thing? If, cause I Zero percent APR? Yeah. I've oh, good all day long. Is that okay? Because I've never ever paid a percentage rate, like maybe once in my life. Like, I've always had zero percent on all of my credit cards, but my husband said that's probably not such a good thing. You should probably get one that is like at least three percent or five percent or. Why would you want to pay interest? Uh, exactly. So he puts a lot of the things that we have on his card because he has a percentage rate where I usually bounce my cards around to where I have a zero percentage rate. So I didn't know if that was a bad thing to have a zero. Okay. Not at all. It doesn't show up on your credit report at all. Okay. No. It has okay. no relationship whatsoever to your credit oh, okay. report. Okay. Thank you. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, I had a question. Yes. So, um, just talk about freezing your credit, mm -hmm. for example. What I found that when I go in and I try to dispute things on my credit report, and like, especially if you do it online, they only give you a few options of the reason why. And you say, well, I'm doing it because it's not mine, they automatically seem like they freeze it. Because when I go and apply for something, then they're saying, well, sorry, we can't pull it, you know, until, you know, you call and, and, and release it. It's that's, like it's some kind of automatic that's, freeze. <laughs> I'm glad you brought that up. Never, ever dispute online. The reason is, is you found out the hard way the disputes are very limited. It's to their benefit, not yours. You always want to write a letter of explanation of why you're disputing. So that's only to them. Um, check, check and see if you check the waiving your rights so you can only dispute online now. And if you check that box by accident, I'd write a letter in conjunction with the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau and just say I didn't realize I was waiving this rights because a lot of consumers don't and then it might give you a second chance at disputing. Okay, we have time for one more question. Uh, help everyone out. Get your file, your slides, and okay. post to the SM Pronet group on Facebook so you can all download it uh, at your convenience. Um, just about debt transfer. So uh -huh. I've got a couple grand on a card for 14 some percent. You know, I apply for this Discover card that does the free credit report. It's got a lower APR. Um, would you recommend transferring some of that? All day long. Yes. Thank you. Get out of that interest. Well, thank you, everyone. <laughs>